talk about parallel versus converging zeros. And a uh, couple things before we, we get into the differences between the two, we need to understand uh, a couple things, right? One, lasers uh, can be used for a various amount of things. So whether you're using gas masks, you're, you're using it as a reference, uh, you're using it as a compliance tool, or you're using it under night vision, or you're using it as your main aiming device, which I highly dis... Uh, I, I wouldn't do that, <laughs> but some people do. So uh, let's, let's talk about also is what is your application of this tool? So one of the one of the things I see a lot of times is people grab gear, grab products, and and they they throw them on and they do certain things just because they were told to, and because that's what they do or that's what they've always done or whatever their excuse wants to be. Um, personally, I would look at what your application is going to be for whatever you're doing, right? Like if you're in law enforcement, all right, depends on what zero you're going to use. Sometimes gear is dictated, right? Depending on what you're doing in law enforcement and policy and all that jazz. But what you use that gear for and how you use it is is sometimes not as depicted as it is. It's not like a uh, it's not like pepper spray where like pepper spray you can use it this time, this time, this time, or a baton where uh, you have to strike them in these spots, not in these spots, which is also ridiculous to think. But either way, I understand. Policy is policy and you have to kind of work with it. Now, when it comes to zeros, your zero is usually not policied or, or policed in, in a way. Um, but it's something that you need to understand is very important. Now, one of the things that uh, a friend of mine, Chuck Pressburg of Press Check Consulting, told me once upon a time was, <clears throat> depending on what laser and optic you're using, you have 100 to 150 uh, clicks of adjustment in whichever windage or elevation, you know, uh, directions. And to your gun, to you, there is only one correct one. So that means there's 100, or I'm sorry, 99 to 149 incorrect zero clicks to the one that is correct. So get your damn zero right. All right. One of the things I hear a lot is, oh, well, it's good enough. Good enough is, it, 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 it makes me kind of angry a little bit because that's telling me that you know there's better and you're not willing to achieve it, all right? Don't be an underachiever, fucking achieve greatness. So now to the actual topic instead of fucking soapboxing it, parallel versus converging zeros. This is a... Uh, just a comparison between the two and my thoughts and my experiences, it isn't telling you to use one over the, over the other. Remember, application is the important thing. What do you need to use it for? All right, and then you choose which zero, but I suggest understanding both of them. Now, let's jump right into it. Parallel zero. It is exactly as it sounds. It is a zero that is parallel to your bore. All right, so it, it runs parallel to your line of sight, it runs parallel to your bore, but it never touches either of them. All right, so where when you zero uh, a rifle, let's say at 50 yards, your eyes and your bore, right, your line of sight line and, and point of impact actually meet at that 50 yard point. With a parallel zero, they never meet, but they are consistent throughout the route. So your holds are always the same, uh, depending obviously on on your round and the the effect that gravity has on bullets is remember gravity has an effect on bullets it does not normally have an effect on lasers uh, other things have effects on lasers so moving along <clears throat> excuse me the actual uh, point of aim and point of impact uh, we'll discuss in the next slide or so and but, but you just need to understand your laser on a parallel zero travels parallel to your line of bore or your line of sight, all right? So uh, no matter where you aim, it's going to be relatively the same spot for relatively the same hits, depending on what you're doing. Now, the parallel zero is, is pretty useful for certain applications. Um, it is a great zero. It's not bad, um, but we'll talk about the pros and cons a little bit later. Now, the converging zero below 
as you can see, it converges at a certain point. So it, it starts out at a diverged level and continuously travels until it meets at a certain point with your line of sight and line of bore and travels further past that and diverges away from it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what you see here is a 50 yard convergence, right? Or a 50 yard zero. This means that between zero and 50 or, or zero and 49, your laser is off of your zero and you have to understand that offset. Then from 51 until 100 and so on and so forth, it is diverging away from your zero, all right, which means it's going the opposite way. So if your laser is like most lasers and it is high and right to your line of sight, or I'm sorry, your bore, then your laser will travel closer and closer down and to the left. And then once it meets at 50 yards, cool, it's good, it's on point, And then it continues its divergence low and left and becomes a low and left hold at let's say 100 yards to hit, get your hits where you want them. All right, so nothing too crazy, but it is a concept that a lot of people don't understand. All right, moving on to a little better description of what it looks like, right, from the front end, a parallel zero being on the left-hand side where it's labeled, uh, you can see optic laser bore, really awesome, <laughs> no big deal, my graphics, <laughs> pat on the back. But what you see here is your laser, right, and your bore, the relationship between them and the offset. That offset is continuous, all right? It's never going to meet with the bore like your optic does or like a converging zero does. It is consistent offset zero. So <clears throat> what you're looking at is that little red dot that's, that's on the laser, that's where your laser is in relation to the bore. And then depending on bullet drop or, or holds, it'll, it'll vary slightly on position of where you're going to hold it for those hits. But the offset between the two are consistent. Then you look at the converging zero on the right-hand side, and it's a little bit more, more to look at and more to understand. Now, zero, right, at zero yards, your laser is where it is in relation to the bore. Then at 50 yards, your laser is where that red dot is in the center in relationship to the bore. And then at 100, it is in the relationship it is to the bore. Not too crazy, nothing too hard to, to kind of understand. But as you can see, it eventually converges with your, with your bore and then eventually diverges away from it. Now, the distance between the two um, of, of 0 to 50 yards or so, that distance between your laser and bore, that'll consistently change, but it, it, it will be high and right, right? And eventually it gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and then diverges and then becomes further and further and further and further and further until it reaches that other point at 100 yards. So what you're seeing there is uh, if we measured it, let's say we'll just go with two inches, right? So there's two inches of offset between the laser at zero and your bore. Then... As you get closer, that two inches becomes smaller. And then as you diverge out to 100, that two inches gets further away, but in the opposite direction. That understanding right there gives you four inches of deviation, let's say, to play with at zero or from zero to 100 yards. So that means that from zero to 100 yards, you have four inches of, let's say, shootability, right? Or, or, uh, where you can play on a body. Now, think about a human body, right? Uh, an average man's chest from shoulder to shoulder or from, from, let's say, front of the chest to the back of your back, right? From like a side profile view, all are still over four inches. So even in the hardest shot or, or what you would assume a hardest shot would be is somebody bladed to you, you're still able to get hits on them because their thickness and their width are still within that four inches of deviation. So you're not working with too hard of a zero there. So don't get too overwhelmed with that. Now, to further my point in understanding the parallel and converging zero, I've created a graphic that has animation. All right. Now, as you can see, parallel zero, right? As an example, we're not talking about yardage. We're not talking about distance. We're not talking about any of that stuff. We're just talking about an example. If I aim here with my laser, 
and I fire my rounds, notice that they land low and left of my laser. All right, that is because, or that is intentional, obviously, because your laser is higher and to the right of your bore. All right, with a parallel zero, it consistently stays around that same size. All right, that same way of shooting, that same thing that you're doing right there, that hold is gonna be similar. Now, obviously, once you get to distance or you start doing different things, your, your rounds are gonna to have to do certain things and you have to understand what your rounds do ballistically so that you can better your ability to use the laser because now you have to think about ballistics to your round and, 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 and it's travel and flight versus what your laser needs to do to accomplish that. So it's a lot to think about. This isn't like day one shit. This is like, uh, I've been shooting for a while. I understand how to shoot. I can do nice groups and, uh, and I can do my thing, right? And I can make this work. That's what you want out of this, right? So next slide, right? Converging zero, but this is a converging zero before convergence, right? Before you meet that, that uh, example to 50 yards. So before I meet it, I have to hold here to get hit here, right? Sound effects matter. So if I laze that spot, I'm, I'm good, I'm high and right, which, which makes sense to a converging zero um, before convergence, all right? And, and also depends on distance. Obviously, this isn't to scale or anything like that, but that's my hold before convergence. Then my hold at convergence, which means you're on your zero, so line of sight, line of bore, and laser are all in the same spot. <clears throat> so I can aim, point of aim, point of impact, right? So to me, that makes sense. It, it is my zero, so it's gonna be on point. So no big deal. Holds shouldn't be a big uh, issue, and it should be understated or, or understood that if I'm zeroed for where I want to be and I shoot where I want to be, then I should be where I want to be, right? Depending on your skill level. And then converging zero after convergence, right? So this is past your zero point. So that's where you're going to have to hold to get hits where you want them, all right? That is dependent on distance, stuff like that as well. We're just talking, let's say this is an example of 100 yards versus the 50 yard zero that we had previously. Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, well, if it doesn't, you just have to back up and kind of rewatch this. But that is the differences between uh, your points of impact and point of aim as reference. These are all examples, remember, uh, of different ways that you can aim or that you're gonna have to aim for different impacts, all right? Depicting the two different types of zeros. Now, Getting into it a little further, right? Let's talk about some of the pros and cons to each zero. A parallel zero, all right? Some of the pros are it's always gonna be the same hold for windage, all right? Depending on distance and conditions, obviously. But your windage holds, right? So your high and right are gonna be consistent the entire time. Um, obviously, at a certain distance, you're gonna have to hold higher and righter if, uh, if you're shooting further and further, or just, um, I'm sorry, not righter, it's going to be, you're going to have to hold higher, essentially, for that bullet drop, depending on what is going on. So if you understand your zero, and you're shooting a 50-yard zero, and you parallel zeroed at, a, at 50, and you're shooting 100, then your hold is actually high and right, but low on the target, if that makes sense, so that you can get your hits where you want them. Um, now, as crazy as that sounds, that's that's essentially how it works. So depending on what you're shooting at, how far you're shooting, and what you're shooting, uh, and the conditions you're shooting in, it it is relatively the same hold for windage. Um, then less to think about when you're shooting. Now, <laughs> uh, and that's at, at further distances too. So um, like I was saying in, in the previous little uh, bullet point, like things stay relatively the same for you depending on your bullet path and, and what you're shooting at. And, uh, and it's nice because if you're using a crew serve weapon, right, and you're trying to use it for area type conditions in, let's say, Afghanistan, then you're, you're going to be able to shoot and make good corrections and good shooting done and, and have good reference of what you're shooting at. If you're trying to shoot 400 yards 
and and do bullseye type stuff this is where it's going to get challenging because now you have to think about your hold your parallel zero hold and then what your round is doing ballistically and dropping at 400 yards depending on what you're shooting and all that jazz so things to think about there as well now some cons right some cons to the parallel zero you need to use or create a target for zeroing um, and we'll talk about how to zero it in the next slide but the the need to create or or use a specific zeroing target is is necessary with a parallel zero because you have to know what the distance is between your bore and your laser so that you may be able to do that now if you use most uh most companies that sell target i'm sorry sell lasers have their own zeroing targets for them um, i've also created zeroing targets for both the mall and peck and to soon do one for the d ball as well and and it's for parallel zeroing um and and we'll talk about more on uh, on zeroing in the next slide uh but it, it needs a specific zeroing target uh whether you create it or you or you print one <clears throat> um the other part is that it is time consuming to zero um whether you're a group or an individual it is it is a very long process uh for for most people now if uh, to put it into perspective or into context um i was i was with a swat team that used a parallel zero it took them three hours to zero their 40 dudes and the reason for that was because everybody has a varying understanding of zero and and what they were doing um and their lasers and their equipment um and they also had varying skills skill levels are different right if i took the time to parallel zero everybody in a class it would be the whole first half of the class all right um and and it's a waste of time in my opinion um not to say that zeroing uh shouldn't be taken care of and done right i'm i'm saying that it takes it's time consuming so it's going to use up a lot of time that could be used on training application and understanding of of your equipment versus having to to learn it on the fly shooting so very time consuming now if you have your own range you shoot at night and you can do it on your own then rock on get yourself a parallel zero good for you but if you can't and you have to do it prior to a class or go to a class to actually do it or uh <laughs> go out into the middle of the woods and 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 make yourself you know a good good backstop and do it rock on but it's it's time consuming it really is and you have to shoot to make it you you can't just do it without shooting um now a converging zero Converging zero pros to it is it's easier to zero individually or a group. Um, and we'll talk about the process next. It's, it's definitely a lot easier and, and not to say that easier is always better, but uh, working smarter versus harder is a lot better in my opinion uh, for most things. Can, uh, you can now get a very close zero even shooting uh, or, or before even shooting, depending on your optics zero. Um, so your if, if your day optic is zeroed you can get a converging zero very quickly or at least close and then having to confirm it when you can and 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 also to to go along with that you can double check that your zero is good or at least close uh in the daytime before missions just by aiming 50 yards and checking through your day optic so pretty cool very very useful technique and i know i used it overseas because of that exact aspect that i could check it so during my checks when i check my optic all right battery's good check my laser my laser's good uh check my settings on my laser my laser settings were good my light is good um you know checking you know pre-mission checks that i was doing on my weapon systems and my equipment now i can also check my zero because my optics zero doesn't usually drop out very easily. It's that with an aim point, you're you're pretty golden with your optic zero. It's not going to move very uh, <laughs> very much if it does. If you leave it where it is after you zero it, um, and checking your your laser zero after that is pretty simple based off of your optic. Um, but we'll talk about how to zero too. Uh, holds for most engagement distances are easily applied. So 
most engagement distances, let's say, uh, are common engagement distances for for law enforcement, right, uh, are from zero and then for snipers up to ish 100. Now, there are a few outliers that were like 400 something yard shots and stuff like that, but most engagement distances are within that 100 yard span in a law enforcement setting. So your holds for that stuff is pretty simple and, and not hard to understand or conceptualize and practice. So that's something to think about too. Uh, I know here down in Florida, I believe the furthest sniper shot in general in real world was 50 something yards. So it, you're, you're, not, you're not losing some, all right, just because you're, you're using it for sniper applications either. So think about that as well. Your application, remember, it matters. Um, and now some of the cons, all right? Offset continuously changes all the fucking time. So every yard that you get closer and closer or every step you get closer and closer or further and further, it changes. So that can get very frustrating depending on what you're doing and what you're applying uh, the laser device to do. Now, if you understand it, rock on. If you don't, this will get annoying as shit. Um, not great for shooting accurate targets past a converging point or your converging distance. So accurately shooting at 100 yards with a converging zero uh, is really difficult. And, and reason for it, at least for accuracy, let's say a, a B8 drill. If you're going to do a B8 drill at 100 with a converging zero, your, your holds, you need to really understand your holds. Once again, it comes down to training and your, and your skill level and application of the process. But if you can do it, rock on. If you cannot, practice or try a different zero. Uh, it may be something to, to think about, especially depending on what you do for a living. All right. Or, or what you do for fun, depending on what, what it is. If you're a hunter and you're shooting past 100 yards under night vision, then you may want to do a converging zero at 100 or use a parallel zero if you're able to. Uh, so, so things like that you have to kind of think about in, uh, in the reference or context of your lifestyle. So moving on, right? How to zero a parallel zero and how to zero a converging zero. Now, the, the parallel zero, uh, it takes a little bit more prep, right? So you have to prepare the target um, at the proper distance between the bore and the laser. And you, you can use a, uh, let's say, a, a pre-made target that, that is made for parallel zeros, or excuse me, uh, or create your own target uh, with that distance between your, your bore and your laser. And you can use a, a hole or a glint tape uh, technique to, to kind of get a good reference at where you are on the target. So what that means is, let's say we, we lay you down at 50 yards, we prep the target up top at 50. And, uh, and we, we put a hole in your point of aim, right? So where your point of aim is center of the target, whatever it is, and you want your point of impacts to be, let's say two inches, like we were talking about earlier, down and left of your lasers position. So we mark that spot. Then you would go ahead and, and uh, lay down, shoot your laser to that target, make sure you're either inside of that hole, which is usually like a one and a half by one and a half or one inch hole, um, just to, to get your laser through as a reference. Because once you push it through a hole, it'll, it'll kind of disappear-ish off the target, so then you know you're in it. Or if you use glim tape, it'll reflect back also blooming the laser, uh, which is also not my favorite way of doing this. I prefer a little hole because it'll make it a little easier for you to understand where you are on the target versus a glint tape technique that reflects and blooms your laser out. So think about that as well. And then, or you can use a pre-made target, like I said, then you would shoot your, you know, you would make sure your, your target's level because you don't want it to be misleveled or, or unleveled because if it is slightly canted in some way, then your zero is not going to be parallel zeroed. You're just going to have a weird offset. All right. Uh, if you go ahead and, and you don't level your, your, your target and level yourself when you're in the prone, then you may have some issues with your zero as well. 
So keep that in mind as, uh, in, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to accuracy at distance with a parallel zero, which is the reason we usually get a parallel zero is because we want more accuracy at distance. So keep that in mind there. Uh, once you've set that all up and you've proned out you know, and, and you're up at your, your, your zero distance, you would shoot five rounds, right? I, I always try to do five rounds when I, when I do my zeros. Uh, good five round group and then adjust as necessary. So you can see where this will take a while to do, especially with, with dude after dude after dude that need to do it in, in succession and then they don't know their equipment or they're all varying shooting levels. So keep that in mind as well. Um, <clears throat> now, converging zero, right? How does zero for a converging zero is fairly easy compared to the parallel. Um, that's one of its pros. This is best done in a, a two-man team, but if you, you can do it by yourself as well. You just have to come off the gun uh, more often. But what you would do is the shooter that needs to zero his optic, or I'm sorry, his laser, would get down behind his gun, right, in the prone, in a nice stable position, look down his optic, make sure his optic is on target, and then turn on his laser and then describe to the other partner, right, the, the non-shooter, hey, can you dial my laser to this direction, this direction, right? And you walk that person in with that laser until it's on your optic. Then you would shoot your five rounds and then you would switch positions and let that dude shoot his rifle after you've, you've kind of messed with his laser. At that point, you both would go down, down range, check it, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, you would make small minor adjustments and then come back, shoot again, and that would be it. So depending on how, how much adjustment you had to do and all that jazz, but you should be relatively on. Uh, I know for a converging zero, I'm usually good to, to get it done in 10 rounds. So in two volleys of five, and I'm, I'm usually pretty golden. So think about that, all right? If, if that is something that you need to double check, especially if your optic, um, I'm making sure that your day optic is zeroed, then you should be good. So um that that's pretty much how you would converging that's how you would get a converging zero so guys that that kind of ends my whole rant of uh 27 and a half minutes of <laughs> parallel versus converging zeros hopefully that helps a lot guys uh, i hope this is helpful to you guys and if it isn't then you can contact me you can email me you can message me on any of the social medias that i usually use um and i'll try and help you I, I'm, I'm all for helping people and, and giving information. Um, I highly suggest getting into a course that will teach you some of this stuff and where you can apply it. And if, if you're part of a law enforcement agency that uses night vision, let me know. I can easily come out and do a course for you guys to make sure that you guys understand how to use your night vision lasers and your, your team skills in those kind of uh, contexts.